Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this week's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to work with the basics of takes in Reaper. Now, if you're unfamiliar with takes, this is a great way of allowing you to record the same passage of audio over and over again, and then cherry pick the pieces that you want from that and combine them to get the best sounding end result. So let's take a look at how we can do that. And let's take a look at how easy it is to work with. So I've created a basic track in Reaper and I've got everything set up now to start recording from a microphone. All I need to do is switch the track on and arm it and we're ready to go. Now what we're going to do with this is I'm going to go through and record one pass and then I come back and record a second pass and then we're going to see how we can work with takes and how Reaper does this as de by default. So let's just arm the microphone and then I'm just going to quickly record a passage of audio. Okay, so let's start recording. For all the latest news on Reaper TV, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. So there's the first recording, there's our first pass. So all I'm going to do is make sure the track is armed, the playhead is back at the beginning, and we'll do the same again. So I'll do a second pass. For all the latest news on Reaper TV, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And we'll do it a third time. For all the latest news on Reaper TV, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So you can see what I've done is I've started each of these three passes off in exactly the same way, but then we've got a different section at the end. So let's just expand this track out and let's take a look at what's happened. We've now got three passes and you can see each one, even though it's all on one track, now have individual sections. And you can see this one has a thick white bar at the top denoting the fact that that's selected and it's also highlighted, whereas these are kind of slightly grayed out. And if I want to choose any of the other takes, I can simply click on those and you'll see that becomes active. Now let's get rid of these extra pieces at the end that are just basically because when I stop the recording, I stop them at different lengths, it'll automatically chop things down to sort of compensate for the different pieces of audio length. So what we've got now is we've got three pieces of audio. So let's just click on the second one and we can play that back. So I can just rewind that playhead, hit play. For all the latest news on Reaper TV, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if I choose the first one, for all the latest news on Reaper TV, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. And you can see we can quickly audition any of these tracks or any of these takes. Now, the next thing we can do is we can slice this up at any point. So I'm just going to come over and just take off the snap tool and I'm just going to enable the, the, the split tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this at the point where the audio changes for the second section. So now we've got two separate sections of audio. We've got the first part where I say the same thing and the second part where we've got different pieces of audio saying something else. So now what I can do is I can mix and match these together. So I'm no longer tied to the fact that if I choose the second take, I don't have to choose the second take on the second part that we've just split. I can choose any of these three options. So now I can start off with the best of the first part and then we can choose whichever second piece we want. So I can say, well, I'll have this one and I'll choose this ending. So now if I rewind that back and play it. For all the latest news on Reaper TV, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. Or I might say I want this one. For all the latest news on Reaper TV, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So you can see we can very quickly build up any kind of sequence that we want so we can cherry pick those best pieces so if you're working on a guitar part or a vocal part and you want to do multiple passes this is a great way of then being able to combine things to make sure that you get perfect perfectly aligned perfectly sort of synchronized audio just to make sure you're getting the best of each of those takes because no one is perfect but over the course of several takes you can get all the best pieces out from it and this is very quick and easy to be able to do that. You can quickly slice things up. You can reorganize things. We can now adjust the timing on the second piece if we want to. So we could easily come in and say, well, the space between this and this is a little bit wrong. So we could easily say, well, I'll just chop those up and re redo them the way I want. So now once we've done that, we've got a couple of other things we can do. We can leave it as it is and we can just let this be the kind of thing that we've got all of these different passes and we might come back at a bit later date and say, well, I didn't really like that particular version. Let's see what other options you've got, which is a great way of being able to come back. And like I say, you can pull out the better pieces or you want to just change things. You can do that. So you can leave these as they are. It's great to do it that way. You can even go into the point and you can hide all the inactive takes. So instead of seeing multiple takes like you can here, we can easily go in and we can just only show the ones that are active but still keep all the original ones there. 
So what I need to do if I want to just hide all the inactive takes is do control or command L on the keyboard and you can see that now hides all the inactive takes. They're still there, I'm just not seeing them. I can do the same again, control or command L to show all those takes and bring them back. Now we have a huge array of different things that we can do with takes. I'm just going to show you a couple of the basics right now, but really dig in and take a look for yourself because there are tons of shortcuts and tons of options. But these are the kind of things that are going to get you up and running and get you working with takes pretty quickly. So let's just have a quick look at some of the options we have available to us when working with takes. All we need to do, just select the active take, right click, and you see we have an option that has a fly out menu that has all the different things we can do with takes. Now, like I say, there are a ton of, of keyboard shortcuts and they, you can customize these yourself. Have a look in the action section, just do a search for takes and you'll see there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens in there. But like I say, this is just the basics. So you can see we've got some keyboard shortcuts to switch between the previous and the next takes, which we can take a look at if I do Shift and T, you'll see we'll just go to the previous take and we can just scroll through those or we can use the media keyboard to, to jump through and increase as opposed to go backwards. So that's just one of the things we can do. You can see we can delete the active take so we can easily strip that out if we only want to get uh, to keep the ones that we like in there. So let's just say, for example, we have some two out of these three are pretty good. So we don't really want the first one, for example, we can come up, we can right click, go to takes and we can say delete active take. That then gets rid of it. You can see it keeps an empty space there so everything stays in line so we know where each of these different sequences fall in line with each of the original takes. So that's a pretty good way of working with things. Let's just undo that. If we come back up again and we go to takes, you can see we can duplicate the active take, we can lock them, we can crop to it. Now crop into it will get rid of the extra takes and just leave us with the one take that we've selected. So only do that if you know that you don't want to, to sort of pull those takes back. But let's just say, for example, you delete it and you think, you know, you further down the line, you think I really didn't want to delete that take. You'll see that if we just move that over, even though we've cut this, we can still expand that out and all the original audio is there. So it's completely non-destructive. So you've always got that there should you need to go back to it at any future point. So don't ever worry to think that you've deleted everything because one of the great things with Reaper is it's, it's very, you know, it's a non-destructive environment. You can really work with a lot of different things. You can delete things and they're still there like we've just seen. So again, let's right click, come up to takes. You can see we can do take envelopes. We can have volume envelopes, pan, mute, and pitch. So all the envelope options are available and specific only to the particular take. We can explode all the takes to a new track. You can see we've got in place and in order. So let's just take a look at that. So we'll say, let's explode all takes to a new track. So we'll give it a click on that. And you can see what that does is that takes this particular block and explodes that out where we've got three instances. It's now created three brand new tracks. And each one of those instances, each one of those takes is now on their own dedicated track. So this is a great way of being able to, once you finalize the piece that you want, you can explode that out. You can deal with those individually. You may want to double track things. You may want to sort of go through and do harmonies. You may want to apply different effects to a separate track by using the same take. This is a quick and easy way of doing that. So the next explode option that we've got is if we come back over and right click, come into takes, we've got explode all takes in place. Now what that'll do is that'll explode all those takes into one track and combine all in this instance, three takes into one take. So let's just take a look at that. So you can see that now creates what looks like one piece of audio. Once I click on it, you can see we've got various different takes in there. And if I play that back, you hear that all three of those takes have now been combined into one track. Don't, Don't forget, forget to subscribe, subscribe to the, to the YouTube there. channel. So I'm sure there's, there's lots of reasons that you want to use that. In this instance, it's not a good example, but the option is there. That if you want to get rid of those individual takes, you can then combine them into one final end result take. So again, let's just undo that a second. And then the third and final option we have is if we come back down to takes, you can see we've got explode all takes in order. And you see what that does is that now instead of having them one above the other, it now puts them one after the other. So there we go. You can see we've now got the three individual takes one after the other. So there's just some of the basics that you can go through. Now, once we've kind of finalized and we're happy with all the options we want, we say we want this one and this one. If I just press T on the keyboard, which is my keyboard shortcut, that will then go through and it'll just give us the take that we want out of all the options available to us. So again, I can control Z and I can undo that. So that should give you a good understanding of the very basic things, just some of the things that you can do when working with takes. 
I use this a lot when I'm doing guitar solos and things because it allows me to comp the best pieces together to get ex exactly what I want, where the timing is where I want it to be, the feeling is right. It's a great way of being able to quickly just loop a passage, play it over and over again, then come back and quickly chop that up if you feel you need to, to get the best pieces or the best performances of each of the different sections of that particular piece of audio. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, happy mixing.